Mm. Oh. Oh, well, there's a cross. ところの安全を扱っているというのはどうかしら。いえ、安全というよりは鎧。次はぎのバリケード。とにかく本人はちっとした。ないってことは同じよね。That's <laughs> Well, I, it's also a pretty um, pessimistic outlook. Yeah. She has a really negative impression of this place. I don't think you're necessarily wrong, but that doesn't tell the whole picture either. I guess she sees it as them not getting psychiatric help or something? I, yeah, it certainly can be a crutch for some people that way, but it's it, historically it has also been a force for healing for others you know yeah I, I, well she doesn't look good no way, she certainly isn't that's what i'm saying it, yeah it's an awful trying to figure out what her opinion point, is here like cynical point of view to, to be hmm. taking the tiny little thing okay for communion first of all <laughs> that is technically true but wildly inaccurate <laughs> yeah yeah, that's Especially not how communion works. Especially <clears throat> when it comes to Catholicism, because the the uh, the, tr the whole transubstantiation principle means that, as far as they are concerned, and this is this is why they have no qualms about giving this shit to children. Mm -hmm. um, as far as they are concerned, as soon as the priest does his whole, you know, consecration of the stuff, yeah, yeah. it ceases to be unleavened like cracker bread and wine and literally physically becomes the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. Hmm, okay. Like that that is the principle of transubstantiation and it is a core part of the of the Catholic belief system. So I see where you're coming from and you're technically correct. Yeah, she's missing out what the But you're kind of missing the point. <laughs> right. <laughs> Again, I mean, you're not Wrong. incorrect, but... <laughs> yeah. Right. Even in Japan, huh? Yeah, that's true. Oh, wow. The rag squeaked as the two carefree souls continued to wipe down the windows. Whistling as they went, they shined up one window, then another, then another, then another. <laughs> そうだ。もう一つあります。ここから見えるあの森、何ですか？The ones on the hill? 森？あの山の上にある。You mean all the trees around us? ですけど、あれは山じゃなくて丘と言うべきです。I would know. I'm from the mountains. Don't insult mountains. I will break you. <laughs> As someone raised in the countryside. Also, literally <laughs> in the mountains, we yeah, told this. from a literal mountain. Sojiro's pride would not allow for a mound of dirt to be called a mountain. <laughs> so, wow. It was as if a shadow fell over her till now sunny disposition. Does she not like it being called a hill? She was undoubtedly a beautiful woman with very lovely features. But as Sojiro looked at her in that moment, her smile melted away and he saw how disturbed she was at his comment. Uh. And when it comes down to it... Sojiro was not one to closely watch people's reactions and fuss over his speech. Well, yeah, it is a chimney. Oh, 
でも私有地だから<咳>地元の人間も入ったことはないんじゃないかしら通称クロンジのお化け屋敷ってね近所の皆さんは気味悪がってるしあんまり近寄らない方がいいんじゃないあんな小さな森なのに遭難したとか野犬が出るとか物騒な話には事欠かないから Giant trees. Just accidents, those kids were all cut up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. あの森には入らないのが町のルールだ。<笑> Idiots and smoke both、um, climb to high places。そもそも私有地だし、入ったらおまわりさんを呼ばれちゃって、そのまま交番でお説教タイムなんて、あんまり楽しくないでしょ。They grill people here? <笑> Sojuro nodded along to her story as he stared at the far off chimney from his vantage point on the ladder. He totally wants to go to that house. A teeny tiny part of him was curious about that hill because it reminded him of the woods where he grew up. But after reminding himself that it was none of his business, he returned to window washing. Thanks to Hanazawa Western Mark. lending a hand, they were able to finish the job without a hitch. Between the two of them, they'd accomplished a simple but very time consuming task. Hi! Gokuro sama de sta! I don't trust you. I know. So, uh, so let's see. Adding to the list of people I don't trust, that hair slicked back but shonen in his class. The nun. Hanazawa. Yeah, Hanazawa. Yuika. The teacher, Yamashiro. And Yamashiro. We have a lot of sketchy people so far.、There's、We're just getting the, started. The boss that, at the restaurant yeah, the who smacks is... his employees in the back of the head with a frying、uh, pan? He doesn't have I, a design. I don't, I don't think he's evil. I just don't. I wouldn't trust him because、sure. he hits people with a frying pan. Right. The rest of these guys, I, I just do not trust them on a conceptual level. Wait until we see the priest. Yeah, right? I'm g o n n a t h a t s w t I'm g o n これから適当なサテンでお茶にしない、uh-huh. 小十郎さんの仕事っぷりに敬意を表して、私がおご。Oh. はい。She cut herself off. 何か言いました花沢さん。いや、ごめんなさい。休養を思い出しちゃった。She tried to invite him out. Sorry, I just realized I was about to ask a minor out on a date. <laughs> right. That's kind of weird, don't you think? Anyway, I'm gonna go over there and see the ocean. Umizawa out! <laughs> yeah. Oh, she actually said ciao. By the time Sojiro, who had started putting away the ladder, turned around, he was only able to catch a glimpse of the girl's figure dashing toward the street at lightning speed. Didn't want the nuns to see her, huh? It was just before three o'clock. More than three hours had passed since Hanazawa <coughs> offered to help.、Mm. Or she didn't want Aoko to see her? Yeah, maybe. I don't know if she, well, if she was stalking him, she knew Aoko was there. Sojiro watched the girl with many strange faces disappear. For someone who seemed to have been on an aimless walk, Hanazawa had spent a good deal of time with him. Yeah. Maybe helping Sojiro out reminded her of something she needed to do. Shizuki-kun, so you need to know? It's three o'clock and I'm not working anymore. It's three o'clock, we're done, let's go home. The student council president popped her head out from the corner of the church. What? The sight of Sojiro putting away a ladder taller than himself seemed to have provoked an emotional response in Aoko. Okay. Then, in an instant, she rolled up her sleeves and began to approach him.、Oh. This surprised him more than Aoko's sudden appearance. Ignoring Sojiro's bewilderment, Aoko promptly began issuing orders. Hachigo, you're going to toss the Iwayo. Stano Ho, what does she got? Ah, he was probably struggling because the ladder was too big. She did all of this so matter of factly that Sojiro began lowering the ladder before he even had a chance to insist that he could do it by himself. Yes, ma'am. (laughs) 
With work finished and the sisters' thank you gifts in hand, the two put the church behind them. The thank you gifts were two dollars and a handful of candies. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Since Alco apparently had something to do around the station, they decided they'd walk together until they got there. I think. I was inside the whole time, so I have hmm. actually no proof of this. I guess you just looked at the windows. Beneath the orange-tinged sky... Full sentence, period. Hmm. Aoko spoke more as though she was expressing her thoughts out loud than striking up a conversation. Probably because she was. Sojiro gave her an earnest smile. But then again, he had been beaming ever since he received his pay, <laughs> so the source of his joy was not so clear. Hmm. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Your grade's not so good. Sojiro hung his head dejectedly. Even if his job had been going well, school mm. was still a bust. Exams were one thing, but even classwork was something he'd found himself fa falling behind in. Aozaki <laughs> We're totally not friends, all right? Listen, it's not like I like you or anything, Baka. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about you on the regular, but She's like... She's not gonna say that out loud. Everyone at school is good people. I mean, I wouldn't say everyone at school are good people, but that's still a weird sentence. Well, I mean, that's a very modern translation. Yeah. That, that's like, it, it, it's in the same vein as calling stuff good civ. It's like, oh, yeah. you, you're, you're good people. Yeah, okay. You, know, you, you is good people. So, <clears throat> I guess his Japanese phrasing was odd, too. Aoko cocked her head to one side, unsure how this exchange had resulted in that response. She decided to interpret it as Sojiro simply expressing his gratitude in his own peculiar way. Listen, if I'm going to keep going out on ledges for you, I need to know what ledges I'm going out on. Hmm. That is a lot of temp work. Since the only school authorized locations were in the Misaki shopping district, his response was much as she expected. That is, except for the decidedly unexpected last part. Yeah. Yashirogi, huh? Uh, huh. This left Aoko rather impressed. Transporting unused amusement park machinery was not a job that students did willingly in their free time. Hmm. If only somebody with Knowledge. Maybe employee discounts would be willing to take me there. Yeah, is that like fishing for an invite? Alko looked up in the direction of the neighboring town. What? You can kind of see the Ferris wheel from here. Can you see the neighboring town? From here, you can just barely make out the Ferris wheel. You can see the next town from where you are in the shopping district? Evidently. The round steel frame of the wheel, illuminated by the sunset as it was, was reminiscent of an old gravestone. So cool. Oh. Alko had to stifle her laughter. She knew it would be rude to Sojiro to burst out laughing, but the remark tickled her funny bone. 
単純にあれが開園してから立て込んでて遊びに行く暇がなかっただけよお金で解決する問題だったらそれこそ今すぐに行ってるわ Aoko showed Sojiro the envelope that contained the pay from the church. Oh, right, yeah. There was nothing sinister about her remark and gesture, <clears throat> but the fact that she didn't jump at the chance to go made Sojiro sad. Oh. You didn't actually invite her! Yeah. Maybe try, I don't know, inviting her, Sojiro, if you want to go Is with her. Is that what he was alluding to? Oh! Oh, oh he did it! Uh, my god! Oh my god! Arigato. Ah, wow, Aoko. Oh, Ouch. Oh, it went out of business. Oh, so that's, they, that's why they were moving equipment? <laughs> that's unfortunate. Oh. Damn, that sucks. What, well, you mean it was closed? There's no wonder there were no customers all the time he was there. Oh. <laughs> Exasperated as she was at Sojiro, the student council president seemed to be enjoying herself. At this point, she'd be yelling things at Sojiro like, I can't believe you didn't know that, but this evening, this one and only evening, she found it charming. Aww. That kind of worked out in the end. They parted ways, and Sojiro returned home to his apartment, immersed himself in his studies, and before he knew it, it was time to go to work. Oh my god. The major cultural difference, though certainly not the only point of difference, between city and country was the use of time. It didn't matter what part of the city he was in, time flowed far too quickly here. Yep. Failing to squeeze even a drop of knowledge from his textbooks, he put them away for the day before heading into town. Yeah, the travel time, all the places he's going to, definitely eats into his schedule. The night grew deeper as today turned into tomorrow. Sojuro reversed his collar to protect his neck from the bitter cold and began to make his way home. Not a soul to be seen, no dogs scrounging for food, no late night shoppers. Why would there be? The solitary convenience store in the area closed at 11 o'clock. Ooh, nice coat. Very nice coat. Is he still wearing neck bandages? Yes. He mustered what little energy he had to take in an especially deep breath. Man-made landmarks lined the deserted street. Garish blue fluorescent light brighter than the stars above illuminated the darkness. An unconscious sense of anxiety stirred within him. Huh. <laughs> A chill crept up his spine as he attempted to mask his weakness with words. Stay out of the dark. Stay away from deserted places. Mm. Whether it was for some deeper reason or perhaps the fact that he looked so helpless, everybody he'd met in his life seemed to warn him with those words. Yeah, whether it's the mountains or here. What did that even mean, stay out of the dark? Nowhere in the city was without light. Everywhere, from the bustling train station to the remote residential areas, was illuminated by artificial light, not least the main roads. <clears throat> scary was scary, but this kind of fear was of a different sort than what he'd felt in the mountains. The most likely source was the fact that this place was governed by starkly different rules. The way in which the city melted and meted out justice was terribly oh. imbalanced. And to the provincial Sojiro, his lack of familiarity with the laws of the land terrified him far more than the dark. In the oh. mountains, retribution came swiftly to those who broke the rules. Take a game trail, for example. Those who unwittingly trespassed on the animal kingdom's domain would, as a matter of course, be savaged by the native wildlife. Accordingly, in Sojiro's mind, an offender paid the price for one's mistakes immediately. Hmm. It was not a matter of who punished whom, it was simply that the one who broke the rules would meet instant, tangible retribution. He felt that, in this regard, the laws of the city were far too ambiguous. One could meet their demise without ever knowing whether one was in the right or wrong. I suppose not. To put it simply, retribution was delayed. To take the analogy a step further, back home in his village, no one, indivi no one individual had been given the responsibility of maintaining order. You didn't have a village chief? 
In the city, however, someone was put in charge of punishing lawbreakers on behalf of the kind-hearted citizens who lived there. While crime and punishment in the mountains were synonymous, in the city the two were separated and an unrelated person brought judgment after the crime had been committed. Entering places that must not be, must not be entered, seeing things that must not be seen, breaking a law had consequences. Someone would come to exact justice for the law that was broken. The result of all this was that the safest way to survive the city was to not stick your nose in the affairs of others. When the people who cared about Sojuro told them to stay away, they probably meant, if you don't, nobody will be able to help you. No matter how much of a nuisance these obstacles were, one could oh. not just climb over a neighbor's fence, even when one's apartment was just the other side. <laughs> Jeez. If the people inside happened to be awake and called the police, nobody would lift a hand to help. With his misguided view of the city, Sojuro once again ended his day in peace. Unable to fall asleep right away, he gazed out his window upon the night sky from the floor of his apartment. The cityscape had caused him to tremble in fear when he first moved here. The convenience of solving almost any problem with the flip of a switch. The novelty of living a wall away from a complete stranger. It all disappeared into the night sky when he looked up. Unconsciously, he recalled his own words. What dim stars. Ah. What a cramped sky. Here, there were no starry nights. Could he even survive here? The same misgiving since his first night continued to haunt him. His eyelids fell shut. Although he was fraught with worry, Sojuro's body felt the fatigue from his work and studies, and thus, he fell asleep. Okay. Well, that is our interlude chapters complete, I believe. Thus ends chapter ah. 1.5. Thank you for the trophy. Um, <laughs> which means... Back on to the main path. Yes. Which means we save up. Yes, that first. And next week, we go to the next episode. Yes, chapter 2. Chapter 2. Where in... Something... Uh, yeah. <laughs> L little happening of last night. Okay, is, yeah, probably I get back to... assume uh, the title of the chapter. Yeah, probably going to get back to that main mystery that Alko and Alice were working on. We saw a little of what Alice was doing because of that interlude, so... We have a bit more of an idea of what was happening on that mountain. The question is, how much later is chapter 2 from chapter 1? Right, I don't because know... Because I got a sense of at least a couple of weeks if not a month or more of time in that interim chapter i know it's i know there was around a week of time scattered across there to the point where sojiro has like been in school he knows what exams are now and stuff right and he's like been working and living there long enough to like have an idea of how the city functions. Right. So some time has definitely passed, but I don't know if the next chapter is going to acknowledge that, or if it's going to continue on as if those, you know, chapters were optional. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. I, I guess we're gonna find out. You know? Yeah. So uh, we're gonna have to figure out as we go exactly how these middle chapters are gonna work. I mean, somebody, somebody did point, mention in the comments that they are in between. Right. So, chapter okay. chapter one happened before one point five, and chapter right. two happens after. Okay. So they they that... are in between the two chapters. Okay. So it um, shouldn't be stuff happening in the middle of chapter two. Right. Okay. And they they are not necessary, but they do provide context hmm. okay. for several things in the main plot. In fact, somebody else was mentioning they didn't even know about them until they finished the game. Oh. Like, they played through the entire thing yeah. and then discovered the in-between chapters after the fact. Oh, good thing we looked in the menu then. Yeah, right? Yeah, okay, so hopefully if we keep doing the middle chapters at the right time, we'll get a more clear picture as we go. Yeah. Okay. Neat. I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah. So 
Good times. Definitely all right with doing those. Uh, so next time, we will continue with the next main chapter. But until then, we'll catch you later.